Hallelujah. Don't turn off your praise. Don't turn off your faith. And I'm just going to pick up where we left off last week. And uh, I actually asked the worship team, I, I saw what they were going to do this morning. I said, hey, just, just do your first two songs. Uh, we want Terry to minister. I've got a word. But the Bible says that the word, he'll confirm the, the word with signs following. Yeah. And so I'm believing that there's going, to be, there's going to be a continued increase of joy and victory as we go throughout this service today. Amen. Amen. There's going to be an increase as, as, as the word comes. We're, we're already like up here and we're going to continue to go up here. Why? Because, because the spirit of God is here and he is doing something in us. And what he's doing is going to take us higher because this is a year of progressing, advancing, experiencing promotion and seeing our highest expectation fulfilled, right? So we've been talking about a legacy of faith, honoring our legacy of faith and things that I've learned from our founder over the years. And, and last week we talked about walking through difficult storms and walking, what do you do when you, to walk through difficult things? And we, we, we finished out talking about, uh, about Abraham last week and it said that he didn't consider, he didn't consider his own body and he didn't consider the deadness of Sarah's womb, but it said he was strengthened in faith. He was strengthened in faith as he gave praise and glory to God. That what God had promised, he was also able to perform. So what God's promised you, you need to understand he is also able to perform it. Yes, Abraham had to get to that place. He had to get to that place where, where, where you know what? It, doesn't matter what? it doesn't matter what I'm seeing right now. It doesn't matter what's going on in my own physical body. He promised this and he has the ability to fulfill it. And, but how did he remain strong in faith? It was what? Giving praise and glory to God. Praise and glory to God. Turn to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, and I guess I didn't finish last week, so we're just gonna jump into this. Some of you know this story. Faith is the victory that causes us to overcome. That's who we are as a church. That's what this ministry has been about for 55 years, making winners in life. And we as a church, how we do that, we want you to experience God. We want to equip you with the word and we want you to go out there and influence your world around you. So faith is our victory to overcome the world. So you ask, well, pastor, how am I going to overcome what I'm going through? Faith. Faith in God, confidence in his word. Faith in the power of the Holy Spirit that he's put on the inside of each one of us. In Acts chapter 16, picking up in verse 22, it says, Then the multitude rose up together against them, talking about Paul and Silas, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to beaten, be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them secure. Having received such a charge to put them into the inner prison. It wasn't just a prison, but they said, hey, let's put them in the inner prison. I mean, you're in the dungeon. You're in the lowest of the low. There's no windows. There's nothing there. You're down actually, Rick Renner talks about they were down actually where the sewer was. It's where you don't want to understand the law of gravity. <laughs> They're in the inner prison, and here they were beaten. They ripped their clothes off. This, this, is a, this wasn't something just to punish them, but this was to humiliate them. This was to destroy them. This was to, to get them to a point was, you know what, I, I don't want to. Man, I'm never going to preach in Jesus' name again. Why? Because my clothes were ripped off. I was beaten with many stripes. Not only that, but put them securely in the inner prison. Not just the prison, but the inner prison. And it says, and fasten their feet in stocks. They're having a bad day. A very bad day. This, this is not a good day. This is, this is one of those things where you called me into the ministry. What? And so here, verse 25, he says, but, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were 
praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Now, you, 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 we, most of us know the story here. But I, I want to pass over some important principles in this, and we're going to get into some other things. We may not even come back to the story because a lot of us know what took place, but I want to deal with the principle of faith here. See, there was, this is what was happening, but at midnight, they were praying. Don't, now, don't, don't, don't go past that too quickly because we can look at prayer as, and look at this as a, as, a, as, as a cool story, and it is a cool story. It's an amazing story of God's power. But it's an it's, it's amazing story of, to me, a man that was on a mission that had faith. He had an assignment and he was to stand before Caesar and it didn't matter what would come against him or where, what he was going to experience in the process, he was gonna stand before Caesar and this prison is just a temporary setback to where I'm going. But the key to getting over was prayer. Now get, get prayer out, out from, from this, just this religious practice that we do. You have to understand prayer is about connecting with the greater source. Prayer is about getting hooked up with the power source. Prayer is about getting hooked up the, with the one that gave you the vision to begin with. And at midnight, they were praying. They were connecting with heaven. They were connecting with heaven. Prayer is, is so many, uh, d there's different things. Kenneth Hagin used to say, a lot of times we just say prayer. We, we look at it and we look at it as this, this one thing, but, but, but he, he, he would talk about just prayer as like this bag and, and what kind of prayer do I need at the moment? Because you have prayer petition. You have prayer of agreement. You got the prayer of supplication. You got the prayer of intercession. You got, the pr you got praying in the spirit. You've got another, what Dr. Sadell would say is the highest form, praise is the highest form of faith. Praise in prayer. Praise, praying. They were praying. What were they? they were connecting with the one that was their source of supply. Now, what does it say? It says they were praying and singing hymns to God. Now, these were not a hymn book that you saw in your Baptist church. Although there's, there were some amazing songs in, in, the, in, in, in the hymn. We had a hymnal in Church of God. We had a hymnal. And, and there's some great songs in that. So I'm not belittling that. But you need to understand, you, what Miss Carolyn just stood up here and said could be likened to a hymn. When she said, when I fall, I shall arise. Amen. When they were talking about singing hymns, they weren't just trying to sing just the latest praise song that was out. They were going to the word. When they talked about singing hymns, it wasn't just singing a song. It was about the word. Where does faith come from? Faith comes from the word. Where do the promises come from? They come from the word. So when they started singing hymns, and, and some, people, some theologians believe that they were actually singing what they call the Paschal hymns. And in the Greek and the Hebrew, Paschal hymns are the Passover hymns. Go, go and read them sometime. Go, go read Psalms 113, 114, 115, 116, 118, and Psalms 136. Let's look at Psalms 136. That's what most people believe. What were these hymns they were singing? Well, bottom line, they were singing the word. They were singing something about the word. They weren't singing, nobody's seen. <laughs> Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. No, no, they were singing, they were singing faith. When you don't use notes a whole lot, sometimes you're not sure what may come out. So, but look at Psalms 136 for a moment. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. 
Oh, give thanks to the God of gods for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his mercy endures forever. To him alone who does great wonders for his mercy endures forever. To who by wisdom made the heavens for his mercy endures forever. To him who laid out the earth above and the waters for his mercy endures forever. To him who made great lights for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day for his mercy endures forever. The moon and stars to rule by night for his mercy endures forever. To him who struck Egypt and the firstborn for his mercy endures forever and brought out Israel from among them for his mercy endures forever. With a strong hand and with an outstretched arm for his mercy endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two for his mercy endures forever and made Israel pass through the midst for his mercy endures forever. But overthrew Pharaoh, his army in the Red Sea, for his mercy endures forever. To who led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures forever. To him who struck down great kings, for his mercy endures forever. And slew famous kings, for his mercy endures forever. Sion, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endures forever. Oag, king of Bashan, for his mercy endures forever. And gave their land as a heritage, for his mercy endures forever. A heritage to his servants for his mercy endures forever. Now get this, who remembered us in our lowly estate, lowly state for his mercy endures forever. And get this, and rescued us from our enemies for his mercy endures forever. Who gives food to all flesh for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven for his mercy endures forever. See, they weren't just singing a song. They were singing the word that was producing faith on the inside of them. There's a lot of great songs out there, but the thing is, is the song you're singing releasing faith or confirming your sorrow? Let's sing songs of faith instead of songs that are confirming our destruction. Let's speak about our victory that we have in Jesus. Not how lonely I feel right now. As long as that, son, that song ends on a high, I'm okay with that. But, but, but the thing is, is we have to understand. Now, now, if you think about this, his mercy endures forever. You see, why is praise so important? Psalms 22 verse 3, 3 tells us this, that God is enthroned on our praises. Some translation says that God inhabits the praises of his people. So when I'm praising him in faith, I'm welcoming God into my situation. Amen. That's why you, you may not feel like praising God, but you need to praise him anyway. Tears coming down your face upset, frustrated, and but just praise him and get in the, you may not feel like, but I guarantee when you get in that word, go, go read, go read Psalms 140, 145 to actually 145 to 150 and just keep reading it, stand up and just walk the four and I'll tell you the joy of the Lord will come upon you. It will come upon you. Why? Because you're not meditating on the problem. And I, I'm not making light of any of the problem, but, but the issue is, is, is we've got to give voice to the one that's going to deliver us from our problem. So when I'm inviting God into my situation and why I praise is because he inhabits the praises of his people. And I could also say this, that when God enters the room, it changes the atmosphere. First, it will change the atmosphere of your heart. Then it will change the atmosphere of your mind. And then it will change the atmosphere of the room. Yes, and then it will change the atmosphere of people around you. Yes, it changes the atmosphere. Amen. I mean, look, you, you look at Second Chronicles chapter 5. I, I remember in Bible school when uh, Miss Carolyn was our teacher on prayer. An amazing teacher on prayer. You need to take the correspondence school and... <laughs> And just so you can take her prayer class. I mean, it's all, all of them are good. But, but thinking about one day, one day in class, Tony, remember this? She was teaching on this and she was talking about um, prayer and talking about praise at the same time. And so she had us 
as a, as a whole class, 150 of us walking around this room, because we, we had tables set up, walking around this room, and she had us declaring, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. You know, in, 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 in Solomon's day, when they did that and dedicated the temple, it said the presence of God came in so strong that the priests couldn't even stand to minister. They couldn't, they couldn't stand it because the glory of God was so heavy. Amen. But you know, that's not the only time that that prayer was, was released. What was Joshua commanded to do? To walk around the walls of Jericho. And that's, what, and that's what she was teaching about. And when we walked around saying, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. It was like, get a vision of whatever walls that are blocking you, whatever obstacles, whatever things that you've had in your life as you meditate on the goodness of God and understanding his mercy endures forever, see that those walls are falling in your life. But what happened It's for the Lord is good and the mercy, you, you don't know what to say, you don't know what to pray. Hey, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. There's another time in 2 Chronicles 20. There's armies, not just one army, but armies surrounding Jehoshaphat. So much so that Jehoshaphat doesn't know what to do. And he says, I don't know what to do, God, but my eyes are on you. He called a fast for all the people. Everyone to fast, to seek the Lord, to set themselves to hear from God. And he heard from God. And God said, I want you to send out the praisers. Not send out the, not send out the warriors. I want you to send out the praisers. But little do we know that the praisers are the warriors. The praisers are the warriors. And so as they stood, as they, they, he, he got this revelation and said, and said, you know, when you start, go out, send them out first and let them praise. And it says that the spirit of God came down and set ambushments against the enemy. Yeah, let's, let's read that. Second Chronicles 20. I, I want you to see this because it wasn't in my notes, but I think it's some good stuff here. Second Chronicles 20. Verse 21, it says, And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army were saying, Praise the Lord. For what? His mercy endures forever. You see, praise causes the atmosphere to change. So when Paul and Silas were in that place of of bondage with their hands, their hands shackled with their feet in fetters, but yet, yet there was, they, they had nothing to put over their mouth. You see, if they only knew that their feet and their hands weren't the weapon. It wasn't about them running. It wasn't about them fighting with their hands, but it's about what were they doing with their mouth because the thing is, 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 is you, can, you can confine me, but you, the word of God can't be restrained. And so they released a power that has been prevalent that God has used for his men and women of God since the beginning, and that was Faith in their heart and faith in their mouth. Where's faith? It's in your heart and it's in your mouth. The word is nigh thee, even in our heart and in our mouth. And, and it says, if we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, thou shalt be saved. So when they're singing hymns, what are they declaring? Jesus or God, your Lord over this situation. You are my Lord and your mercy endures forever. Praise changes the atmosphere. Say that with me. Praise, Praise changes, changes the atmosphere. atmosphere. Now, but if we looked at the story a little further, we could see that, that all the prisoners were listening. Someone needs your faith to come up to another level because they need a dose of faith. 
And it was amazing that when, when the earthquake came and the shackles were shaken off of them, it wasn't just the two that were singing that were set free, but it was everyone in the prison was set free and all the prison doors were open. All because a man sang praises at midnight. Thank you, Father. Praise. It changes the atmosphere. What, thing, what does praise do? Praise silences the enemy. Your biggest battle that you're facing, as Dr. So would say, the battle between your ears. <laughs> and I'm telling you, your praise will silence the enemy. You have to get to a point where you're speaking louder than the enemy speaking to you. Thank you, Father. Hmm. Go to Matthew 21. And if you can also go to Psalms 8. Matthew 21. Psalms 21, verse 16, and this was after Jesus chased the people out of the temple. And it was amazing, after he chased the people out of the temple, signs and wonders happened. So Jesus is like, when you start making the temple what the temple was made for, it's amazing how God shows up. And then he goes down here, uh, just without going to all that, says, Hosanna to the son of David, and that's worship. They were indignant and said to them, do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes, I hear it. They were trying to get on. Do you hear what they're saying? They're praising the son of David. And Jesus is like, yeah, I hear what they're saying. And then he says, have you not read? Have you not read? <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise. They were trying to tell them to shut up. But Jesus said, yeah, I hear him, but don't, don't you know the word? After all, you're the doctors of the law. You should know this word forwards and backwards. And don't you know what the word says? It says that out, out of the mouth of babes, hallelujah, that he has perfected praise. Hallelujah, perfected praise. But what was he quoting? Jesus was quoting Psalms 8. Thank you, Father. Verse 1 of Psalms 8. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength. So now they equate praise to strength. Out of the mouth of babes, out of the mouth of nursing infants, this perfected praise, what is that perfected praise gonna do? It's gonna bring strength. It's gonna bring strength down on the inside of you. Why? Because praise changes the atmosphere, not just around you, but it starts in here first. Then all of a sudden, it works its way up into here. And all of a sudden, now what's in here is all of a sudden, wait a minute. Oh, no, yeah, I can get, yes, I can get over this. I can get through this, yes. Yeah, my latter days are gonna be greater than my former days. And then it changes people around you. Hallelujah, you have ordained strength. Now get this, because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. So my praise not only gives me strength, but it silences the enemy. It silences the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how you want, you want to shut the enemy up? Just start praising. Start getting into his word and start reading some Psalms. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Start reading the word. Start reading the promises. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. When I consider your heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you're mindful of him or the son of man that you visit him? God wants to visit you. For you've made him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the work of your hands and you put all things under his feet. Then it closes out and says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Praise. Praise silences the enemy. Let's go to Genesis 29. Genesis 29. Look at, let's look at this praise, silence from the enemy and the power that is in praise. Yes, it changes the atmosphere. God inhabits the praises of his people. But let's look at one of the first places that we see here about praise. Now, Leah gives birth to quite a few children. And most of all her kids, she talks about her affliction. She talks about what's wrong, what she's gone through, and, and the setbacks that she's had. And finally, she gets to this last child in verse 35, and it says, And she conceived again and bore a son and said, Now I will praise the Lord. Most of the time before, she was trying to have children because she was wanting her husband's approval. But she got to a point where she said, I'm, t I'm tired of looking man to be my source of approval. And she finally said, I'm going to give birth to this other child. I'm going to call him Judah. She says, now I will praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Judah. And the word Judah means praise. Let's look at Psalms 49. She's praising. <laughs> Hallelujah. She's, she's singing some beautiful songs to the Lord right now. We just don't know what she's saying. <laughs> Hallelujah. So in, in uh, chapter 49, Jacob is giving last words over his sons and prophesies over each one of them. And he gets to verse, for the sake of time, verse 8, and he talks about Judah. And says, Judah... You are he whom your brothers shall praise. And your hand, whose hand? Judah's hand. Your hand, or you could say Judah's hand, shall be on the neck of your enemies. And your father's children shall bow down before you. Now, Judah. Judah means praise, and then it says, then he says, Judah, and this is the prophecy over Judah and over one of his sons, and says, your brothers shall praise you. And it says that praise puts the hand on the neck of the enemy. Praise silences the enemy. And we see in the, these, this prophetically through these scriptures that what praise does within scripture, according to these prophecies, that Judah puts pr praise puts the hand on the neck of your enemy. You want to stop the enemy in your life? Praise. Right. Praise will stop the enemy from messing with you, talking to you, convincing you with things that don't line up with the word. Praise. Praise. Praise is not just this thing we do on a Sunday morning, but praise is our faith that we're releasing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah into the atmosphere over our situations. Now, I did write this quote down. It says, praise is not a silent act. It is a voice of faith. It's a voice of reliance that God, that God in his, uh, upon God and his ability. Let me say it again. Praise, it is a voice of faith, and it's a voice of reliance upon God and his ability. Amen. Kenneth Hagin says this, if we will put our faith in him and demonstrate that, demonstrate that faith by praising him, it will bring us through every situation to a place of victory. Let me read that again. Kenneth Hagin said this, if we will put our faith in him 
and demonstrate that faith by praising him, it will bring us through every situation to a place of victory. One of the instructions that Dr. Warnings that Dr. Savell gave us this year about the, in this year of progressing, and he said, stay in faith. He said, remain focused and don't be distracted by the enemy. So let's, let me encourage you this morning that staying in faith is also about staying in praise. Because praise, praise silences the enemy. Let's go to Hebrews chapter two. Hebrews chapter two. Hallelujah. Stay in praise. Hallelujah. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. Mm -hmm. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Father. Mm. Now, when we think of Jesus and we look at Jesus, and we look at his life and ministry, we see him as the preacher. We see him as the teacher and we see him as the healer. Matthew 4 tells us that he went about teaching, preaching, and healing. But the Lord wanted me to deposit in here this morning that you need to start seeing Jesus, not just as a teacher or a preacher and a healer, but you need to see him as a praiser. Jesus loved to praise God. He loved to praise his Father. And you're like, well, do you have chapter and verse for that? I, I do. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Actually, I've got several here, but Hebrews chapter two. Let's read out of it. This is actually my first Bible I got after I was born again. look at verse 8. Now, let's, let, now think about this. This is about being in difficult times, about being overcoming the enemy. But look at verse 7. For some little time you have ranked him lower and inferior to the angels. Well, we just read that, didn't we? In Psalms 8. You have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the work of your hands. Set him over the work of your hands. That means Jesus is authority. Man is an authority. Verse eight says, for you, this is the amplified, for you have put everything in subjection under his feet. Say, it's under my feet. It's under my feet. Now, get this. Now, in putting everything in subjection to man, he left nothing outside of man's control. But at present, right now, currently, we do not yet see all things subjected to him, man. Meaning I put everything under man's, I put everything under man, but he says, right now I'm not seeing everyone have victory. Isn't, isn't that what that says? I've I, I placed everything under man. He says, but right now I'm not seeing everything subjected to man. But verse nine says, but we are able to see Jesus. Now, this isn't, I've looked at this in my own personal life that, that I'm going through something and right now I'm not victorious over it, but I'm looking at Jesus and we can do that. But really what the, the writer here in Hebrews is wanting us to see is what did Jesus do to overcome? Verse nine, but we are able to see Jesus who was ranked lower than the angels for a little while, crowned with glory and honor. We read that in Psalms eight. Because of having suffered death in order that by grace, unmerited favor of God to us sinners, he might experience death for every individual person. Amen. For it was an act worthy of God and fitting to divine nature that he for whose sake and by whom all things have their existence in bringing many sons into glory. Hallelujah. Meaning he wanted to bring us up to where he is. That he should make the pioneer of their salvation or victory perfect should bring to maturity the human experience necessary to perfectly equip for his office as high priest through suffering. For both he who sanctifies, making men holy, and those who are sanctified all have one father. For this reason, he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Verse 12, now get this, for he says, talking about Jesus, 
I will declare your, the Father's name to my brethren. Now get this, in the midst. Who's gonna declaim it? Jesus is. In the midst of the worshiping congregation, I will sing hymns of praise to you. So here we see Jesus sings hymns of praise to his Father. And again he says, and again he says, my trust, now here we're seeing faith and praise. And again he says, my trust and assured reliance and confident and hope shall be what fixed in him. And yet again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. So not only is he praising, but he said, in all the children that he's given me. Now let's go to Psalms 22. I was teaching here for a moment. Because Jesus was quoting Psalms 22. Hallelujah. Praise. Hallelujah. Puts the, <laughs> my hand on the neck of the enemy. Praise is my victory. I'm going to stay in faith. And as I stay in, I'm going to stay in faith. I'm going to stay in praise. Psalms 22, verse 3 says, But you are enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted you, and you what? Delivered them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. Now let's go to verse 22. And this is what we just read in Hebrews. It says, I will declare your name to my brethren, in the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. If Jesus were, were in this room right now, you know what he'd be doing? He'd be praising the Father. Because that's what he's saying. I, I'm going to praise you in the midst of the congregation. He says, I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I'll praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All you offspring of Israel, for he has not, now get this, he has not despised nor abhorred your affliction, the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard, my praise shall be of you in the great assembly. So when I believe when Jesus was in the lower parts of the earth, he said, I'm going to cry to him and he's going to hear me in my affliction. And what does he do? I'm going to praise him. 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 I trust him. And because I trust him, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to continue to trust him. And because I continue to trust him, I'm going to continue to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there's other Psalms we could go to, but worship team, come, come on back up. And I want to close with this. Revelation chapter 5. Let's look at verse. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Look at verse one. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with his voice who is worthy to, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals. A strong angel had to proclaim who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals. Verse three, and no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. They couldn't even look at it. Verse four, so I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. It's kind of like, I wanna know what it says. So I wept much because, this is John, so I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, now get this, has prevailed. You know, what, they, you know what, what tribe Jesus came from? Judah. 
Some of you weren't too sure. <laughs> what tribe did Jesus come from? So Jesus is the lion in the tribe of praise. Jesus is a worship leader. Jesus is a high priest, and he worshiped on our behalf with his blood into the Holy of Holies, and he went in, and he made access available to me. And I'm telling you, he is the one that has the ability to open the scroll and to read the scroll, and he is the lion in the tribe of Judah, and it says he prevailed. He prevailed. He prevailed. He put his hand on the neck of the enemy. Do not weep. Don't weep. Don't weep. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne of the four living creatures, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into the earth. Then he came, took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and a golden bowl, bowl full of incense, which are the, what, the prayers, the praises of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign, what? On the earth. You know what? It didn't say that you, we're going to reign in heaven. It says we're going to reign on the earth. So how are we going to reign? How are we going to prevail? It's going to be in our praise. It's going to be in our praise. It's going to be what's coming out of our heart and out of our mouth. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Your praise. Your praise is a force that causes you to overcome. And I'm not talking about just an emotional aspect of praise, but I'm talking about something that's down on the inside of you. I remember going through a difficult thing and challenging thing in uh, 2007. And I remember uh, getting off the phone and hearing some news about something. And, and I remember a brand was very, very small, like one and a half, two. And, and I remember... Uh, Just I, I had tears in my eyes and and because of something was going on, I was troubled by something. And I remember looking at him and he he looked at me like, like, what's wrong? And and I remember looking down at him and I said, I just looked at him with tears. I said, Brent, God's faithful. He he didn't know what I was saying. And, and I remember right there, and I know it being one and a half, he's not gonna he wouldn't remember this. Man. It's almost 19 now. And I remember dancing before the Lord, lifting my hands and just worshiping God and saying, God, I trust in you. I trust in you. I trust in you. I had no reason to praise the Lord in that moment. I had no reason to lift my voice in that moment. But it was praise that brought daily victories. It's praise. And it will be praise that will continue to bring victories. Can you guys lead us in that song? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.